Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Nady, and today we'll be testing out Give by Gwen Stefani. And like always, my loves, this is about the products and not the people behind them. Any tip you may have with them, please cast it away because this is a channel of positive energy. Okay? Thank you. Oh, my little bananas, how you doing today? I hope wherever you're at the world, you're having a spectacular day so far. I will admit, though, even though Gwen Stefani is in the name, I don't follow Gwen Stefani. I've never really been a fan of their music. Don't come for me. But of course, I know who Gwen is. Like, she is so beautiful. Like, if I could choose who to age like, I want to age like Gwen. It's like she keeps getting younger. And I also think of her iconic red, bold, poppin' lips. So, the eyeshadow palettes, which retail for $28 and you only get four in there, to me, they're kind of a pass. I mean, the quality might be spectacular, but even if it is good quality, it just visually gives me, like, ColourPop vibes, and ColourPop's way cheaper. But you never know. The shadows might actually be fabulous. I hope they are, but I don't know that they'll be worth $7 a piece. That's, like, professional grade quality. Like, that's only a couple bucks less than Pat McGrath. I think what a majority of people are probably here for is the lipsticks, which I got the cream one and the liquid. And who doesn't love a good red lipstick? I rarely ever wear red lipstick. I'm more of like a neutral kind of person. Or if I am gonna wear a red, I'll wear like a brownish red or like a deep one. I don't know why I don't wear many reds, but truthfully, these do look beautiful. So let's quickly go over to the C4HA website and look at all the shit for this. I got Rich Girl in Danger Zone palettes. These retail for $28 and they have like two and a half out of five stars. Not very good. The lipsticks really do seem to be where the fuck it's at. They also have an eyebrow pencil. They have a waterproof liner and all of that has great reviews as well. But to me, a good liner and a good brow pencil is like a dime a dozen. Well, honestly, so is a good lipstick. But the colors are just so damn beautiful and they actually do have really good reviews. Like both of these are five out of five stars. So yeah, hopefully all of it's good, but I would be really surprised if the lipsticks were shit. With the eyeshadow palettes, they just say apply with a fluffy brush. Oh, Gosh, this is really dirty. I do want to say the packaging is cute. It looks just like a natural recycled paper. A lot of times companies will use that when they want to emulate the whole natural vibe, whether it's natural or not. The lids aren't completely shut. It's like somebody really sloppily stuffed this in here. And I'm a little bit scared that one of these shadows might be broken because right when you open it, there's like pigment dust and just fuzz and a bunch of shit all over. So let's just pop her out like that. I do know that fulfillment centers are very dirty, very dusty. There's always pigment flying around. So if it's just like pigment dust, it's really no biggie. It's hard to avoid. But kudos on beautiful packaging. I really do think that's stunning. And this outer packaging actually continues on the inside of this. It's like behind this plastic bit. So that's actually really cool. I like that. It does look kind of cheap too. A little bit crafty like DIY Joanne Fabric Hobby Lobby moment. But who doesn't love a good scrapbook? Okay, so... So let's open this part up and hopefully nothing's broken. Oh no, we're good. Still again, very, very dirty. But this is just like, it, it it's coming apart. I don't know if you can see this little bit up here, but it's literally like, oh my gosh. Oh, oh. I actually think that it was supposed to do that because the logo is once again there on the inside and why would they put the logo there if this wasn't meant to come out? So I wonder if these are interchangeable. Oh no, it does say that this product was designed to be refillable. That is very, very cool. Okay, I like that. Still very, very, very filthy though, but I don't really care. It's about to be even dirtier as long as it's not like hair or eyelashes or like mucus or something. We are good. Colors, they're nice. They're nothing spectacular. Very, very basic. I feel as though I have that. And for $28, I don't know. I just wish there was a little bit more. That one was Danger Zone. Let's go with Rich Girl. Of course, everyone knows Rich Girl. And she too is quite dirty. There's like specks of pink and red. Maybe there's red in this palette. I really don't remember. No, it's just, well, there's kind of red. I don't know. Okay, so absolute F for presentation because these are filthy. However, total A for concept. I love the fact that these come out. That to me is ingenious. I really don't know how much you're actually saving though. It seems to me like this part should have been plastic and this should have been like paper or maybe this should have been paper and this plastic or shit if we're that worried about saving the earth. Come out with a less bulky packaging initially. I don't know. It's cool, but it's not the most thought out ever. Like it screams cash grab but like one of the more creative cash grabs, I guess. I don't know. I do like the colors though, but seriously, anything unique, not at all. This little combo right here is almost $60. And for $60, bitch, I could get like a professional Patrick Ta palette. I could get two of them. I could get a Natasha Denono, some Pat McGrath. And for me, the price point really justifies whether or not it's a cash grab because obviously this is 
is kind of like inexpensive seeming product that doesn't need to be $28. And if somebody's heart and soul is actually into this company, they wouldn't charge that. And I haven't really seen anything on this brand, so I don't know much about it. But if a brand ever promotes their items as being in like 100% recycled material, and that's why this stuff is so expensive, don't believe that. A lot of packaging, even without announcing it, is made out of recycled materials. It's great when companies do that, but 99% of the time, most companies already are doing that. And I found it's kind of more of a marketing ploy when there aren't enough good things to promote about the actual product itself. Like if you have a basic ass palette, oh, let's highlight the packaging. So yeah, it's very psychological, kind of like how I was saying that a brand will use this if it's like a natural seeming product. But in reality, you're paying like $28 for a $2 product that's in literally the exact same packaging as everything else you own. But it still is a brag worthy right? Like, that is fabulous. Recycle people. Don't recycle people. Recycle my people. So yeah, sorry about that. That's my rant. Anyways, moving on. Let's go on to these fabulous lipsticks. I love the weight of these. They're actually quite heavy. Not that heaviness has anything to do with quality, but it's nice to spend a lot and actually have it be, like, weighty. So here is the cream lipstick. Very cute packaging once again. Although now that it's out of its kind of heavy-ish box, it does feel a little bit cheap, but here is the color. Oh, that is pretty. It's kind of like a bluish tone, I think. I don't know, on camera it looks orangey, but in person it's bluish. It's still really, really pretty. How much was this? $26? <gasps> Oh girl, no. How much is a Pat McGrath? Okay, so like the higher end lipsticks like Pat McGrath, Charlotte Tilbury, Dior range from like 10 to $12 more, which for a lipstick, I feel like a lipstick should just be like 10 to $12. But still, that's a really high price tag. And then we have the liquid lipstick, which retails for 24. Ugh, this is very, it's just, it, it looks cheap. It honestly looks like when people have big graduations, that's the font that they use. It's just giving me like cricket machine vibes, you know, where you can like print your own thing. I don't know. Cute component though. Let's see how's the doe foot? Very nice. Average. Ooh, it smells very good. Quite typical. It kind of smells like the Lunar Beauty ones, the Kylie. It's like a caramely candy corn smell. Very pleasant. A little butterscotchy. So my loves, I'm really curious to see if the price matches the quality. Really packaging doesn't mean shit shit on here. I don't care. I do kind of feel like if you're paying a higher price tag though, they should put a little bit of effort in here, but it does seem like they did put some kind of effort in this. So I'm happy. Well, no, I'm not happy. I'm curious. That's a better word. So let's go ahead and swatch and do a look with these little bitches, shall we? Y'all know the song. Are you ready? Swatch and ta ha ha these palettes are so cute and tiny that I think I'm actually just gonna do live swatches here. So let's start with this Rich Girl one. I do love the colors in here. They are quite attractive. Oh, and that is buttery soft. Not the most pigmented, but it does feel nice. That matte feels lovely and it picks up quite a bit. Ooh, you know what? These do feel quite nice. So let's plop her right there, 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 and there. Oh, I grabbed too much. Whew. Yeah, those look divine. They feel heavenly. They're buttery smooth. But I will admit, I have really affordable brands that do feel the same. So we'll really have to see how they perform. But just from swatches, they absolutely are fuckable. So now let's dive into this cooler toned palette. I'm glad we got two palettes because I don't really care for the colors in this one. We actually don't really get a shimmer in here. We get a shitter? Well, no, it's not even a shimmery glitter. It's like a matte with a little bit of glitter. I feel like if you blended that one out on my pinky, it would just turn to a matte. You can't really even see the flex of sparkle she has in her. All right, but anyway, let's plop that there, 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 and there. Whew, yeah, very nice. Once again, the exact same creamy formula. I really don't have any complaints about that so far. It's really just the price tag because those are so not worth $28 a piece. In fact, just to do a little bit of comparison, I am gonna pull out a ColourPop. I'm not doing this to be shady. I just wanna compare because not everyone can afford $60 for two little palettes. But I instantly thought of my ColourPop Stone Cold palette, which this is a little bit pricey of a palette for ColourPop, but you get a lot in in here and um, well, yeah. I do think the warmer shades here do look quite a bit richer, but that's because there's no warm shades in this. It's primarily a cool palette. But here is one of the Stone Cold Fox shadows right under there. The Gwen one definitely feels better, but the ColourPop one is also pretty damn good. I guess it kind of depends on the color itself. Ooh, that actually looks like that shadow. Kind of. Ish. So I guess the point that I'm trying to make is that the palettes, they don't really seem like the star of this collection. They seem like the colors have been over 
done, already worked a million times before by other brands, and if I'm gonna pay that much, I would rather get like three ColourPop palettes. Because even though Gwen's formula does honestly look quite a bit better than ColourPop's, in the end, the looks are probably gonna be very comparable. So let me know down in the comments below if you want me to try to dupe these. I'm never trying to take money from anybody. Like, if you love Gwen, go support her if that's your thing. But I also understand that this is makeup. Not everyone can afford these high ticket items, but they still want to create looks that are inspired by these. But moving on to the lipsticks, where the fuck am I gonna put these? Let's first start with the liquid lipstick. Oh god, that just smells good. Dare I taste it? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that tastes like a fresh creme brulee, shit. It's like even a little bit sweet-ish too. Oh damn, that's good, okay. Let's put her right here. Ooh, very, very nice. Looks extremely pigmented, bright, vivacious. She is gorgeous. It kind of reminds me of the original Fenty Lip Stunna paint. I think that's what it was called. Beautiful. But it was like a universal red that anybody could wear and anybody could wear it. It was ungodly gorgeous. Okay, so there is that. And then let's put the bullet right next to it. It does take a little bit to warm up, but it seems like once it's kind of melty, it goes on pretty well. Actually, you know what? Let's just put them on the lips. Shit. We'll start with a bullet, and here we go. Uh, okay. Mmm. Ooh, all right. I, uh, okay, so there are some feelings. I do have pretty expensive lipsticks that are around this price, and they're like one swipe for the whole lip, but this is not like that. It's not bad. It's just you kind of have to layer it up a little, but once it's layered on, it kind of dries down like a liquid lipstick. I don't mind this. Ah, wow, that is such a beautiful color. Mama likes. Okay, so what do we think? It's pretty. It doesn't seem splotchy. It's very even, very pigmented. I don't know if you can really see how much that I used, but I definitely put a little bit of a chunk in it. I don't think this is a lipstick that would last you very long. So to me, it's not the most like price conscious choice. I definitely think you could probably get the same color much cheaper, but the formula does seem good. Good. It's a little bit drying like as it's drying down. It's kind of tightening on my lips like one of those clay masks But I don't think it's bad like I would totally forget about this throughout the day I think it's a really really pretty just out of curiosity I'm gonna put my favorite Pat McGrath gloss over this and that is the bloodlust 2. It should match it almost perfectly mm. Oh, that feels so much better. That looks excellent. That is like Vogue worthy bitch. Yeah, I like that Okay, let me take this off make sure to smear that around like a dirty blowjob and let's go in with the liquid one. Yeah, that smell is just heavenly. So, not the easiest to apply with this doe foot. It's not difficult, it's just not the most pleasant. And it also dries down very, very quickly, like immediately. Oh. Oh. So now that this is actually on my mouth, it doesn't taste as good. It tastes almost exactly like the buttered popcorn jelly bean, which if you like that, you'd love this, but that is the only jelly bean that has ever made me gag. And I've had like the Birdie Bots every flavored ones. I always want to throw up when I have the buttered popcorn one, but we are going to trudge through this. It dried so fast that I actually couldn't even rub my lips together to disperse it. This dries amazingly quickly. Amazing if you're good at drawing your lips on, but I totally rely on shape them by rubbing my lips together. So not amazing for me, but once it's on the lips, hmm, it's not uncomfortable, but it feels almost exactly like the cream lips, just a little bit more like gritty, like sandpapery, not terribly uncomfortable. I think it just needs a lip gloss over it, which is also kind of counterproductive because that's just going to make it go everywhere. And it could just be that my lips right now are way too dry for this because I do have dry ass lips, but I thought I was doing good. Like I even did a lip mask last night to prepare for this, but it's still just not the most comfortable thing ever. But does it look good? It looks Fucking good. Like the pigment is there, that shade is excellent. I could see anyone rocking this, like whether you have light skin, deep skin, anywhere in between, this would probably look beautiful on you. So I understand why this has the five star review, but having tested like hundreds and hundreds of lipsticks on here, I do know that you can get better, especially for that price. But is this bad? No. So for shits and giggles and to kind of help remove this, I'm gonna go back over it with my Bloodless 2 gloss. Damn, that is pretty. Fuck, these are gonna look so good together. Oh yes, that 
is where the fuck it's at. Mm. I'm only applying a little bit because if this doesn't melt everything totally and I could actually get away with wearing this without this sliding all over my face and down to my nips and toes or getting on my teeth, then I actually would keep both of these lipsticks. They are stunning. Okay, nothing on the lips yet, I don't think. Maybe we should talk. Doja Sally Espia Stick Fragicale of Rupus. Still nothing on the teeth. Oh my god, I need to do something with my eyebrows. Holy crap. I'm gonna pause for a plucking break. No, oh, I give up. It's easier just to pencil one eyebrow in anyways. But as I'm just talking, I am noticing that quite a bit of this is slipping onto my teeth, so I would probably maybe only use this combo for like pictures because I would be way too scared to wear this in public or on here because like all it takes is one of those to be like, mm, not a cute look today. But color-wise, so pretty, and I know it's not supposed to have a gloss on it, so you really can't fault it for melting with a gloss. We knew that would happen. Just out of curiosity, I'm gonna compare it with this ColourPop lippy. There's that color. This is the shade Starcross. These might be two completely different colors. I have no idea. Instantly, this one feels more buttery, more hydrating, more creamy. And I think this color is a little bit more luxurious too. It has that like oranginess added. They're both really pretty. Like I could totally ombre these. Okay, anyways, let's wipe this shit off and hop into an eye look. Both these eye looks are gonna be really, really simple because these are simple palettes. I'm not a huge fan anymore of doing like this big cut crease because a lot of people can't do that. That's just unrealistic for like every day for most people. And I wanna be able to have looks that anyone can recreate. So let's just do something simple. To prime my face, I'm gonna go in with this Yenza Tone Up Primer in the Essential Glow variation. Never used this, but I don't care how my foundation looks today, so let's try it. And we already know that my foundation probably isn't gonna match anyways today, so I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna mix my NARS Light Reflecting Foundation with my NARS Matte Foundation. Oh my God, look at all the red around my mouth. Fuck, this lipstick like stained me. Well, hopefully this foundation will cover it up. Oh, that's actually a really pretty combination. It still looks like I'm wearing makeup, but I do also have a lot of foundation on, so that's why. Oh, so, mm, wow, they are not too bad together. And then for Consquealer, I've been loving this KVD Good Apple. You don't need much of this. In fact, this is already probably too much. But on days when I'm not reviewing a face product like a foundation, I do like to go in a little bit heavy. I love that like serious highlight. Just brings me back to my old days. Plus, if you are gonna do cake face, these are absolutely the products to do it with. Like, these look so good on my skin, even though I have like a gallon of shit on there. Then I'm dipping into my Jacqueline Cosmetics palette into these two shades right here, and I'm just gonna take a little bit of that right under the eyes. And everywhere else, we'll go in with a little bit of Laura Mercier. We can just lightly pat that on everywhere else, and then I'm also gonna dust any excess powder away under the eyes. Hey, yum. Everything looks really good. Like, even though I applied so much product, it really doesn't look that cakey. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of setting spray before we move on. Ugh, smells so good, but it tastes so bad. I'm gonna wait to finish up the rest of my face in case there's fallout or I somehow fuck things up. So let's dive right into the eyes. I'm gonna go in with the Gerard Cosmetics Clean Canvas in the shade Fair. And let's start with the Cooler Tone Palette. With both these palettes, I'm just gonna apply the lightest shade on the inner corner and gradually get deeper. So let's take a little bit of this. Right under the brow is a little bit of a highlight. Ooh, nice. Yeah, that's that seems okay. It's not the most poppin' thing ever, but it's also almost the exact same color as that base that I put down, so it's not really that surprising that it's not showing up. But from what I can see, it does look pretty okay. So I'm just gonna take the same brush and dip into the next color. Let's place her right on the crease and start building that color up. This is just with one very, very light dip into there. That's nice. It's not dusty at all, but it's not like overly pigmented. Like this seems very, very user friendly. It's not the kind of shadow where one dip is gonna cover your entire face. You can either start light or you can build it up. So let's see what it looks like built up. This is with one, oh gosh, one other little dip. I just picked up way too much. Okay, so let's take this and fluff it out around here. Yeah, that's really lovely. It just like blends itself out. This is just a basic like $2 brush. That looks great. $7 great. I don't know about that, but it is decent. Then let's dip into this deeper brown to add a little bit more depth. I will say there is a lot of kickback with these. It doesn't seem like there's any fallout, but when you initially dip in, there's like shadow blowing everywhere. So there is a good bit of waste with that. And it kind of doesn't really want to stick to the brush that well either. But neither of those are like a make or break for me. I'm just trying to warn ya. But with this deeper brown, I'm going to push it right into the eye socket and take a little bit of it right on the lid itself. I'm only keeping this right on the outer like 
like two thirds because I want to create a bigger looking eye. So I'm just really trying to work this little slot bag right on the outer corner. And it is doing a beautiful job. Like it blends in with that first shadow so nicely. These are just rich seeming. Still absolutely not worth the price. You could totally do this with much cheaper shadows. But as far as quality goes, like you can absolutely tell that it does have good quality. Then I'm going to blend this shit out even more on the outer corner with that first brush that I used. There's pretty much nothing left on it. It's easy to create like an elegant look with this. I don't think there's many looks that you can create with this palette. I mean, look at the shadows. They're like, what are you going to do with that? But the few looks that you can create, I do think would be pretty. This is absolutely a supplemental palette, which there's nothing wrong with that. I just wish for the price we got more, especially when you can get all of these shades from literally any other palette. But I'm taking that last black that has a few little shimmer speckles in it and just patting it right here. I kind of just wanted to see if the shimmers would dust away and they kind of flew off my brush even before I put it on my eye. So if you're wanting that little tiny bit of kind of useless shimmer, then you're probably going to want to apply it with your finger directly to a wet primer, maybe something a little sticky. The sticky medium that you use on your eye is totally up to you, but I always like to use a primer. <laughs> primer. I do just kind of wish there was some shimmer in here. I feel like we're really, really lacking that. Like, honestly, we could have totally done without one of these two shadows because in the end, this pretty much blended out to be that color. So I personally would have rather had a really pretty shimmer right there or right there. That just would have made more sense. In this other one, they included two shimmers, which that to me doesn't make sense. Again, though, could I have gotten the same look with like a ColourPop palette? Probably, I don't know that it would have been quite as easy to get here, but it still probably would have been pretty damn easy. So I am not yet convinced about the pricing on these things, but don't mistake that for me saying that they're not good quality because they are good quality. Like if 28 bucks isn't that bad for you for four shadows, then you'd probably be totally okay with this. But I just think that if you have money like that to blow, spend it on other makeup items that actually are worth the price. Like why blow money just because you have it? You might as well justify it sometimes. Okay, so now I'm going in with this other palette. I'm just gonna do pretty much the exact same look. Kind of. I can't really do the exact same look. We're only given two mattes. But I'll try to create something similar so it's a little bit cohesive. The first shadow that we have is once again absolutely lovely. It's blending out quite effortlessly. On a clean brush, I'm going in with this dark reddish brown. And this palette is very, very similar to the other one in that it has a lot of kickback. But absolutely no fallout with either of these palettes. So that's still very admirable. I actually wonder if both these palettes palettes would go together well, like a little bit of this black on the outer corner maybe. I will have to try that. I'm not going to try it right now because somebody might not want to get both palettes and I want to show you what both of them look like, but maybe I'll do like a little live or something. I don't know. But blendability, 10 fucking points. That is so good. So now with this lighter shimmery kind of matte, I, I don't know what this is. Whatever it is, I'm taking it on my finger and I'm just going to plop that right on the inner bit of the eye. Not a lot picks up from the pan, but if you're wanting some something buildable that's not like overpowering, it's not going to throw your taint on the ground from overpigmentation, then you would probably like this. This is now my fourth layer on my eye and it's just starting to really show up, but it is in my opinion getting prettier with the more that I apply. Oh, I'm getting a call. Okay, so there we are with that lightest shimmer. I want to take this rich, beautiful, bronzy gold. God damn, that's pretty. And I'm going to take that like on the inner two thirds outwards. Oh, oh fuck. I love this. Just this color combination I think is really pretty. Once again, this is probably the only look that you're going to be able to create with this palette or something really similar. You could probably get like a daytime and a nighttime look with this and just use this for the daytime and then deepen it up with this deeper one for the nighttime. But other than that, you're kind of limited. So like it's $14 a look. Does that make sense? I don't think it makes sense. Maybe it does to you, but that's me personally. I do think both these looks could absolutely afford a little bit more of a highlight. So I'm going to dip into this Dior Backstage Highlighting Quad into this beautiful light shade. I'm going to pop it right on my inner corner on this eye. Oh shit, I didn't do my lower lash. Okay, well let's do this and I'm just going to blend out those exact same colors on the lower lash like always. And then on the other side, I'm going to dip into this more champagne colored one. And then like I said, I'm just going to smoke out these same colors. I'm going to start with the 
deepest and then blend that out with a lighter shade. Oh my goodness, my neighbors for some holiday decided to get their little kids a full drum set. But in between each unit are two cement walls that are supposed to be like a fire blocking thing. And even with those two cement walls, I can still hear their drumming like it's in my room. It is so annoying. Like who the fuck lives in basically an apartment complex and gets their kids drum sets? Is that not like one of the fucking most inconsiderate things ever? Not to complain, I mean, there is way worse things happening in the world, but isn't that just weird? Like, I don't even know what to do. Like, do I complain? I think I've now entered my crotchety old man phase and I just need to fucking buy a house already. So here are the eye looks. I do really wish this side had some kind of a shimmer. Do I dare put on a shimmer? You know what? Screw this. I am gonna add a little bit of shimmer, damn it. And this is the Poplux Highlighter Platonic, which I know everyone is probably wondering, where the fuck are your highlighters in this brand that you always talk about? Oh my gosh. I will give you an update, make like a video, but oh my goodness, this last couple years with like COVID and everything, it's completely changed the entire makeup world from production to literally every aspect. And I honestly feel so terrible because I know people feel like they're strung along, but I will just say because of everything that's gone on in the world over the last two years with like wars starting and with COVID, things that were once like 10, $20,000 are now in the six figures. And when you go from that big of a jump, it's really, really hard to rearrange your life, rearrange any kind of retirement that a YouTuber could possibly have. And when you're bringing third parties in, like laboratories and people making stuff, you now rely on other people entirely. And when those people that you're supposed to be able to rely on aren't always reliable, it becomes such a shit show. And so y'all deserve an update. I will say right now, I do have fabulous samples of my highlighters. However, they're having issues pressing them in the big size. It's an issue that is very, very fixable. It's not that hard to fix, but for the last year and a half, I've gone back and forth with my lab and they won't like follow my directions. So it is just really, really hard. I'm stuck with the people that I'm working with. I'm glad to be working with the people that I'm working with because they are really, really talented. But when you send somebody an email and don't hear from them for like two or three weeks, it becomes really, really frustrating. So I'm not here to like talk about my stuff. This is all about Gwen Stefani and her fabulous stuff, but I used my highlighter in my eyes and I knew that I wouldn't be able to do that without some kind of explanation. But if you do own platonic and you have these colors, those go together really well. I think that's just the little pop that it needed. Perfect. So moving on, I am at the stage in my life where I will take any kind of lifting that I can. So I'm going to do a little bit of a wing. That's honestly the main reason why I'm always doing a wing. If I do it right, which sometimes I do, it just lifts the face really well. All right, my face is pretty much all done. I did kind of go in a little bit heavy with a blush today, but hopefully it works. I went and lined my lips with Red Brick Road by Gerard Cosmetics because I kind of want to try the cream. A liquid lipstick, it's probably going to last a while, and I actually thought the cream color was a little bit prettier. So we'll try this, and if it just smears off throughout the day, I'm just going to switch. Ooh, that's actually a really pretty color combination with that liner and this. However, you do want once again, have to use a lot of this product, but it's really pretty. And here we are with both our final looks. I mean, the quality of everything really does seem exceptional. I really don't have any issues with anything that we use today. Like, do I wish some of the shadows were set up a little bit differently? Yeah. But I think that's more personal preference, but I also think it makes more sense as a user. And so it's just little stuff like that that points this more towards being like a cash grab versus something that an everyday user would have actually used. Like, I couldn't see Gwen actually actually using these, but maybe she did. So I'm gonna do a wear time test with this. This is how we look. I will see you at the end of the day in just a second. Okay, well, we're back. It's maybe been 30, 40 minutes. And I looked at the lipstick and it's already fading quite a bit. I've literally just been downstairs editing. I guess I have been talking, but I've not like wiped my lips or anything yet right around the center area. This isn't quite as vibrant. So I think I'm gonna wipe this off and try the rest of the day for the few hours that are left and use this liquid lipstick. I think that might be a little bit better. I do really love the color of that bullet lipstick. I don't think the pencil could have done that. Like, I don't know what the reasoning for that was, but did it budge? It absolutely did. So let's try this one. Mm, that flavor, it starts off so good and then it just gets so gross. Don't hold that against it though. The flavor only lasts like 10 minutes. Before I can even put my lips together, it's already dried down. Oh, God damn. 
Okay. I don't know. Is that a thing people really, really want for something to dry down in like two seconds? I think for me personally, it's a con because it doesn't give me time to like shape out my lips the way I want. But if you're looking for something that dries really, really quickly, that's it. It's almost like an ink pen where you have that like three and a half second window where it could smudge. Once it's on, it does feel really good. This feels very comfortable on the lips. Still, again, with that slightly gritty texture something? Yeah, I don't know. So I'm gonna wear this for the last few hours of the day. I will see you in just a second. And we are back. It is the end of my day. I gotta say, this lipstick wore sensationally. Well, I think. Hold on, let me find a mirror. Yeah, I think it looks pretty much the same. And when I was in my bathroom looking at my makeup, I thought this lipstick was so damn pretty. Like, the color, it does look similar to this, but it's so much more vibrant in person. I love this. I think I like this lipstick more than the cream because I totally forgot this lipstick was even even on my lips. No, it's not the most lightweight, comfortable thing ever, but the color alone just makes it worth it. Like I ate a little bit of a salad, I ate a protein bar, and this shit still looks good. I think it looks the same, there isn't any on my teeth. The only thing that just kind of bugs me is there is that lingering taste. I thought the taste kind of dissipated after a few minutes, but no, it is still there and it is still strong. Like anytime I lick my lips, I just taste buttered popcorn, jelly beans, it's not good. So now that I've worn this for the entire day, let's go ahead and and do our thoughts because we definitely have some feelings with this. So the eyeshadows, they're really pretty. They're nice. They blend out great. The formula is fucking awesome, but you could also get those exact same things for way freaking cheaper. I don't think they are at all worth the price. I don't really think anything that we tried today is worth the price, but especially those palettes, like $7 per shade for your first launch. No. I like their concept of using recycled packaging. That's really cool, but that doesn't sell me. So do I recommend those? No, unless you got a lot of money to burn and you don't really care what you're spending it on. The lipsticks, I think, are really the stars of the show here. I don't think this cream one is at all worth it because the longevity for me just didn't cut it. The color was really pretty, but within a couple minutes, it was all over my teeth. It was bleeding, even with a liner. And I have so many cream lipsticks from really cheap drugstore brands that I could use and probably find the same color. The liquid lipstick, even if you're gonna get anything out of this collection, this is probably the only thing that I'd recommend. To me, it's not anything spectacular. I certainly don't think it's worth the price, but is it really pretty? Hell yes. I think it's one of those beautiful universal reds that at one point in time probably was kind of rare, but now every brand seems to have this one red that anyone can pull off. So really all you're paying for, I guess, is the name, which to me doesn't really do anything. So is it a good product? Yes, it is. It's beautiful. I love the color. It feels decent on the lips, not the most comfortable not the least comfortable, but do I think it's worth the price? No. However, if you're curious, I think this is probably going to be the product that you're least disappointed in. Probably either of the lipsticks, because if you're a cream kind of person, you might like the cream lipstick. I always lean towards these guys because they just last longer. But overall, yes, everything was very, very good. It's just a huge ass price jab. Prices are not justified. This isn't professional grade makeup here. Yet four shadows for almost 30 bucks is very pro pricing. So yeah, that doesn't really make sense to me. I'm excited to see what they come out with next, but this first launch is just very, very boring when the lipstick color is all you have to rely on and the fact that some of the packaging is recycled, that's not much of a stepping ground, you know? So no, it's not bad, but no, it's not worth it. Anyways, my loves, there you go. Thank you so much for being here. I love having you and let me know down in the comments below if you tried anything from this line. Did you like the lipsticks? Did you like the eyeshadows? Did you try anything else? I always love hearing from you. And if you decide, hey, I would love a little bit more Nady in my life, please head over to my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash poplux. You get videos a day early. You get Patreon only content and best part, it is cheap, fun, and fancy just like me. And like always, please be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell down below so that you're notified anytime I upload a new video. Don't forget my newest collection of highlighters, including Black Ice, which does change from black to white, will be available again soon at poplux.com. Also, my latest album, Kids of Fame, is available everywhere online that music is sold. Thank you so much to everyone who's supporting them. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter at official Nady, and you can follow me online at thepoplix.com. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all, and I will see you again soon. Bye.